All right. Had a shower and everything, and got myself a coffee. So I can keep playing for longer. Now, about to head out from this place. We got solar stuff as well. Um, there we go. There's going to be stuff going on here. Right. Uh, mystery of. Damn it, you again, soldiers. The bearded quartermaster gives you a friendly nod. What can I do for you? I saw you talking to the girl hiding her face. Who was she and what did she want? I don't know, Commander. She never introduced herself, but I bet she's not a part of our army. I know all our soldiers by name and by sight. Wilsa frowns gloomily, his cordiality gone in an instant. She was looking for some elf volunteer. Wanted to know which tent he was sleeping in. At first I thought she was a messenger from Mendev, she definitely wasn't one of us. But now I see how it all looks mighty shifty. The quartermaster eyes you with concern. She was some sort of spy then. Um, show me what you have. Need some items to sell you. Yep. I don't need the heavy crossbow. Alright. Free up a little room. Now, people I wasn't able to talk to earlier should be able to talk to you now. Beautiful! All the companions and everything, and all these other people. Uh... I'd like to talk to you also. Commander. A tall man with piercing yellow-green eyes gives you a brief nod. Let me personally congratulate you on your new title and thank you for your time in advance. I am Lyata Hawkblade, an inquisitor of the Church of Iomade, the bringer of light. I require your assistance in a certain delicate matter involving one of your companions, young Count de Aranarande. Um, one of my companions, okay. Count. Um, what brings you here? I ask you to assist the Church of Iomade in an investigation of the utmost importance. I understand that the leader of the Crusade has plenty of other matters to attend to, but please allow me to tell you the details. Perhaps it will explain why I am calling upon you. The Inquisitor's open face instantly reveals his feelings. He frowns and looks through you, lost in his thoughts for a moment. I suppose that you have already heard about Count Arundea's story. I refer to the tragedy at the Heaven's Edge estate. Yeah, we heard about that. Um, tell me what happened at Heaven's Gate. About ten years ago, several powerful demons managed to penetrate the Wardstone barrier and commit mass murder of all the guests who attended the feast in celebration of young Dayaran's birthday. The unknown magical disease they had brought wiped out the whole estate in less than a day. That was not a unique case in itself. The demons had attempted such raids on Mendevian lands before, but they had never dared target such a well-protected place. The Arunde family was exceptionally rich. The estate was protected by elite bodyguards. There were several strong and righteous paladins among the guests. Moreover, the revered Nestrin, Dayaran's tutor, was one of the most powerful priests of Iomade in the vicinity. All of them died, nonetheless, except for the young Count, who had suddenly manifested his outstanding sacred healing powers. Was that a divine miracle or a curse? That remains to be seen. 
You're going to investigate this old case again, aren't you? Yes, I am. I have several reasons to doubt the widely shared account of what exactly happened at the estate and how it happened. You see, Commander, I was among those sent to examine the estate after the incident. I saw everything with my own eyes and I still remember it clearly, even though it feels like it happened a lifetime ago. Heaven's Edge was a unique place that still carried the spirit of old Mendev, Mendev before the world wound. And yet on that day it turned into a labyrinthine house of horrors, like something only seen in our nightmares. Apologies for the digression. I wanted to tell you about my suspicions. Everything about the incident seemed odd. Why was the only person left alive a young boy with a newfound talent for divine magic? Why did nobody send to Kenabras for help, even though the agony spanned many hours? We found the demons dead, with their heads cut off, when we got into the estate, how were they defeated? How did the disease kill even the paladins present at the estate, who are said to be immune to any disease? If the demons had found a way to penetrate the holy warrior's defenses, why has this never been repeated since the tragedy at Heaven's Edge? You are the only person who can help me here, Commander, because the only living witness of those events is currently serving in your army. Your army's route will take you near the very site of the tragedy. Heaven's Edge has been abandoned and sealed with potent magic throughout all these years, and only the Count has the power to break that seal. He is unlikely to invite an Inquisitor inside, and in any case he won't like me sniffing around his family seat. But if you, as his commander, express your wish to visit the estate, he will be obliged to fulfill it, and I will simply follow you as one of your attendants. There are a hundred ways, a thousand paths, and myriad loopholes in human lives that the forces of evil can use to their advantage. I am not sure which one of those led the demons to the gates of Heaven's Edge, but I do know it wasn't a simple raid, the kind crusaders face every day. That incident involved a significantly more powerful entity, and that is why I am asking for your help. We cannot be sure that such a tragedy will not happen again until we uncover the truth. You have already been to this state several times. What do you expect to find now? I was a young and inexperienced inquisitor when I first visited Heaven's Edge ten years ago. My skills have improved significantly since then, and I have paid dearly for that. Lyata makes a vague gesture, pointing at his scars. My arsenal includes many spells and techniques dedicated to gathering information about people and events. Almost all of them require me to be physically present in the place where the event in question happened. That is why I must return to Heaven's Edge. Why can't you just search the estate itself without involving me? The estate is abandoned and sealed with powerful containment enchantments that only the Count himself can lift. This is not the main reason, however. The main reason is that Count Arundé is not officially under investigation by the Inquisition, so I couldn't just break into his house even if I found a way to bypass the spells. This is a serious matter. Lyata frowns. A matter that threatens the reputation of the entire Church of Iomede and my own organization in particular. We made more than enough unforgivable mistakes during the Third Crusade and are still dealing with their consequences. Your presence will give my investigation the necessary legitimacy, Commander. But there is more, in addition to getting official permission I'd also like to bring an independent third-party investigator to this case. Someone independent, but well-respected, and you fit this role perfectly. Did you question Darren himself? I did but the Count insisted he couldn't remember anything about the incident due to severe shock. 
he saw the demons at the very beginning when they appeared at the celebration to announce the onset of the plague and mock their victims. He also witnessed the death of his mother, Countess Selina. That was all he would tell me. Lyata pauses. We had found the young Count sleeping like a log on the floor in one of the rear chambers, having drunk about half the family wine cellar all by himself. There is no reason to disbelieve him on that matter. How old was he? Isn't he just a child? <laughs> Bloody hell. Um, bed income. Uh, so, you suspect that Darren is hiding something that he is to blame for the tragedy? I deliberately refuse to entertain any theories or suspicions so that it doesn't affect the investigation. There is a saying among my colleagues that suspicion is the mother of prejudice, and prejudice is married to failure. I can only tell you that Counter and Day wasn't suffering from demonic possession, the most common malaise in our country at the time. Prelate Hulrun himself examined the boy right after the tragedy and he didn't sense anything awry with him. Fine, I'll help you. What do you need me to do? Lyata bows his head to you with exceptional reverence. Thank you, Commander. Now I ask you to speak to the Count and tell him that you wish to see Heaven's Edge. Please do not inform him of my presence right away, I will join your escort when it's time to travel to the estate. When we get there, I will also require your help during the investigation. You will have to follow me, observing my actions as an independent witness. If you have any other questions, please feel free to ask me. I will remain here for a while. I would like to discuss the investigation and the events of Heaven's Edge again. Naturally. No. I will tell... Of course. Uh, tell me more about yourself, Inquisitor. I want to know who I'm dealing with. I am Alfen by birth, but I have lived in Mendev for most of my life, dedicating myself to the service of the Inheritor. My warrior brethren mostly worship Gorum, but I've never been eager to fight for the Sarke of battle alone. I was a good fighter in my early youth and could easily best most of my peers, but I didn't enjoy showing off my skills. Victory is bland on its own. Purpose adds flavor to war. I can't say that I have always been a faithful sword of Iomade. Back in my mercenary days, fate brought me to the borders of Mendev, where I spent quite a long time among the Crusaders. Fighting shoulder to shoulder with my righteous comrades in arms and watching demons commit their atrocities eventually led me to something I had been seeking my whole life, purpose and faith. That is how I found my calling. Even though it may be hard at times, I've never regretted my decision. Are you one of Pel Prela Hellrun's followers? Lyata's face freezes for a moment, but he nods. Yes, of course. Debug his phone, I need to change what... ...thing I'm using on it. A new one, so I haven't really got it figured out with the size of the thing for my ear properly. What size are these other ones?
other one as well. Just so that even. That looks better. A little bit bigger ones, but. Um, okay. What is your opinion on the Acrystorats? Uh... Nyata is silent for a while. Usually, people reveal such things about themselves only to their confessor, not to some curious stranger. Still, I did ask for your help and that imposes certain obligations upon me. Let me put it like this, I spent enough years by Prelate Hulrun's side to learn how to keep him from going over the line. I think I heard something about you on that. Usually try to keep him in check. The Prelate is an extraordinary man but he has fallen prey to his own paranoia and monumental sense of responsibility, which has gradually eroded his razor-sharp mind. He has witnessed so much hideous darkness that he now sees it in every shadow. Yet his strength was, and still is, a shield for all the people of Mendev. That is my opinion. His comrades and advisors are necessary to prevent him from making unforgivable mistakes. Where were you during the attack on Canabras? I was on the hunt. A very successful one, but, as often happens in life, this minor success was a mere harbinger of a larger failure. If I hadn't been so far away from Canabras on the day of the attack, I might have been able to help my comrades and prevent a number of deaths. Thank you for your answer. It is not an easy topic for me. I'd prefer not to discuss this again. I have to go. Is that Commander. Yeah, that was it. Um, who's next? Oh, it's not from Booty again. Okay. Yeah. See what we can do. Here we go. Is that a trap?
I can handle it. Can't make the demons wait. See any perception checks? Beautiful. Let's see what we can do. Uh, let's go the way. It's Ember. Come back to her. Here we go. I can handle it. Okay. So the temples. Can't make the demons wait. Let's see what we can do. The bearded right. it's only not any gold, but I've got gold from other things and we've got some cooking ingredients. And other such potions and scrolls. Um okay. So Back to I can I'm handle it. Just going around circle here. Who's the person here? 
uh, just these soldiers. Any named ones to talk to? Yeah. Oh, it's moving here too. Can't make the demons wait! Ah, glowing croissant. Tasty dish. Recipes are always useful. Beautiful. And now we're up to talking to you. Maybe lots to talk to you. Hello again. I'm very pleased to meet you. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me. It's a pity I wasn't there at the Grey Garrison to witness your feats of strength with my own eyes. The flash, however, could be seen miles and miles away. Some people were frightened of it, thinking that the demons had blown up the remains of the keep. I, for one, knew immediately that it was a good sign. The light above the city showed us that there was still hope. We destroyed the woods sometimes. Um... Okay, we'll be rude about this. Um, who are you and how could you possibly be any use to my army? My name is Sozio Vanek. I am a cleric of Shaelin, the Eternal Rose and the Goddess of Beauty. Yes, I know that many people would consider me useless in a war. This is not a usual war, though. Just consider our enemy. The Abyss and his demons are the very embodiment of everything evil and ugly in the world. Perhaps a disciple of kindness and beauty might come in handy. He really doesn't like keeping his bloody hair body on. Uh, I have no doubt that we will win this war, Commander. We just have to. It is our destiny. My role is to help you, and all those standing by your side in this struggle, to survive and flourish. Everyone deserves the chance to find peace and happiness in the world that they are defending so selflessly. What are you painting? The cleric's eyes linger mournfully on the canvas. The unfinished painting depicts a temple crowned with a rainbow-tailed bird, the symbol of Shlin. Five people dressed in robes stand before the temple. Men and women, young and old, they all gaze back at you with radiant happiness and joy in their serene eyes. Yeah? My brothers and sisters in faith. They sent me for help and then... They saved my life, Commander. If the Prioress hadn't ordered me to escape the city and seek help, I would have died right along with them. Instead, I met Queen Galfrey on my way to Nerosian, and hurriedly returned to Canabris, only to find my friends dead on the steps of our desecrated temple. Okay. I want to draw them the way they live on in my memory. Wise beautiful, and loyal to their goddess and their city to the very end. the good alignment side of things I'm sorry for your loss thank you I will never forget that I owe them my life every minute of it every breath that I take is a gift they gave me now it's my duty to make sure my friends and tutors did not die in vain I will honor their sacrifice by making this world a bit more beautiful and kind What made an artist enlist in the army? Perhaps I am a true artist, or simply an amateur who defaces canvases in my spare time. My goddess is a patron of art, 
So painting is part of my prayer, and I put all my heart into my pieces. But I am a cleric above all else, so I must also tend to others. I went to war because here's where I'm most needed. Sure, I could be painting idyllic landscapes and offering empty prayers to my goddess, but that won't stop people from dying. My goddess has no tolerance for false piety. You wanted to discuss something with me, right? Yes, I have a personal request. Before we undertake our journey and leave Canabras behind, I would like to visit Martyr Zacharias' cemetery for a funeral. It's not far from here, and it's important. I would it's like to pay my respects to my friends from the Temple of Shalin, who died defending the city. Also, if it's not too much trouble, I would like you to come with me to honor their memory. Their friends and family will be at the funeral, and perhaps the commander's personal presence will bring them comfort. Okay. That's the reason for me going then? I know that you are burdened by many cares right now. So I understand if you can't find the time, but if you could, I would be sincerely grateful. It was nice meeting you, now I have to go. You must be rather busy indeed. Leading a crusade all by yourself is no joke. I still believe that you are up to the task. This war has been raging for a hundred years, but you've given us a chance at victory. And I'm not leading it by myself, you're one of the people I'm supposed to consult with, the like the Queen wanted me to do is, um, what picture? can't remember what she called them. Um, advisors. Um, ah, yes, you as well. Um, let's save, just in case anything goes wrong. Uh, to going to there you are. Heaven's Edge. Uh. All right, we'll ask about that last. Um. So, how you do you like your new role, advisor? So he's another advisor. Yep. Dayron winces. You also enjoy poking me with that stick. Don't you? Imagine it, me, a crusader. If my dearest cousin hoped to teach me a lesson, she managed it perfectly. An assignment I couldn't avoid without losing face, this idiotic journey leading straight into the demon s'mores. I could have been on a pleasure boat right now, with the loveliest songstress in Pitarks on my arm, and a bottle of the finest Kyonin wine to keep us company. Come on, you don't really care about the face you have to people. He obviously wanted to stay. Um, <laughs> some of the other stories he talks about him doing. Um, didn't take much to twist his arm to stay. Uh, did you also see a fraction of the unusual power? Looks like it. I genuinely hoped that getting away from you would be the end of it. If your gift truly did come from my Omade, then giving me a smidgen of that power was a very subtle joke on her part. I had no idea that our divine light bringer of Mendev even had a sense of humor. Don't get me started on my many acts of sacrilege against her. That obscene engraving, the truth about the test of the Starstone, is the tamest one by far. Um, people say that you're deliberately trying Queen Govry's patience. Is that true? Does it even matter? All of Mendevian high society has declared war on me. They either despise me or they are trying to steer me back onto the right path and I'm doing everything in my power to keep them on their toes. I relish the prospect of all the fun this mess in Kenabras will bring. Dayaran grins from ear to ear. 
I shall either commission a song about the great Ken Arbra's fiasco from a certain talented bard, or confuse the jewelers with a rather tall order, a batch of silver dragon toys with detachable heads. Give me a week, and they will be in every shop in the capital. <laughs> That's in reference to the um, dragon that died at the start of the game. Use the good alignment, so I'll go that. I don't really think it's a bad thing. <laughs> Silver dragon toys are not like only wealthy people break out to buy them. <laughs> and Jewel is going to make them um, anyway. The heroic dragon who who died for our future deserves respect, not your mockery. She's dead. She doesn't really care. And I shall enjoy three or four minutes of rather pleasant thoughts about the rage of those sanctimonious fools who pestered me the most. Oh. Alright, we'll ask about this now. I love to visit Heaven's Edge and see the... and, s and rest your estate someday. I don't know how to say that word. Oh. I was just about to mention it myself. Hmm. I've been thinking. Now that I'm in the middle of this whole crusade nonsense, I simply must devise new ways to have fun. True. With all the recent commotion, my birthday completely slipped my oh. mind. What if we were to celebrate it at Heaven's Edge? It's not far from here, and you'll get to enjoy a banquet in an bono fide haunted house. Oh, now I feel bad. We're going to investigate him on his birthday? Oh my god. Dayron seems to have trouble getting the words out, which clearly indicates how rarely he has to ask for anything. Since you're my superior, and I'm your advisor, I am obliged to ask your permission to leave for the festivities. And I want to invite you, too. I'm sure the commander can free up an afternoon while the soldiers are on leave. <laughs> so, yeah, he really wants us there and he's, he's scared to ask, I guess. He doesn't normally ask for things. Um, are you really going to throw a banquet at the very place where your whole family died? Alright, do you, um, let's continue this discussion after the Battle of Hmm. I don't want to bring up the family stuff right now, do I? It's a bit eerie. Um, alright, deal. Perfect. You will have a ball, I'll make sure of it. Something strange flickers in Dayran's smile. Alright, good. Didn't want to depress him. <laughs> it's his birthday, bloody hell. Um, Alright, I should go. Um, uh, more loot. Now, I want to save, because I want to talk to this guy. Um, 
the elf before you casually rests his bandaged arm on the weapon at his side. He bows his head with dignity. I congratulate you on your new rank, Commander. My hunt demanded that I travel with your army. Naturally, I wouldn't burden your forces with the need to care for an outsider, I've provided myself with all the necessities. Okay. You can at least provide yourself if you need it. Um, food or whatever. Mm. Mm. Good fortune to you. Hmm. Can't talk to the younger one, can you? No. Um. Alright, talk to you. A stout old man with a fuzzy grey beard greets you with a deep bow. Well met, Commander. You've caused quite the stir. Everyone thought Ken Arbras was done for, but the gods had other plans. That was quite a blaze over the Grey Garrison. All the vermin running out with their tails between their legs. I already know who he is, alright, we'll ask you. Uh, who are you? Visalia Rathimus, former rector of the Kenabra's Temple of Abada, and now your humble servant. In times like these, one cannot serve the god of cities while sitting comfortably behind a city wall. I want to sit properly in my ear. I'm not sure if I want a larger or a bit smaller one. I'll try a smaller one. That's something I'm going to pull this out with. Um.
All right. Sorry about that. Um. You pursue a sacred cause, and I will help you in any way I can. I await your orders, Commander. Lead us onward to Drizzen. How did you end up on the battlefield? Everyone here has a story like that, but mine is a rather boring one. Believe it or not, it was bureaucracy. When the old rector of the Kenabra's temple died, may Abada rest his soul, the church required a replacement. Yeah. I volunteered, and served for 30 years without incident. Wow. I prayed, organized festivals and funerals, bought candles, sanctified water, boring, mundane things that make up the daily routine of civilized society. But then civilized society failed, and it was time for me to go to war. Praise Abada, who led me through the ruins to the Defender's heart. Who is the boy with you? This one. <laughs> Kyado the Shepherd, my apprentice. He's oh, a I'm smart boy, and his faith is strong. He serves Ira still, though, but there's still something he can learn from an old servant of Abada. He'll be a great cleric when he gets a little older. What kind of help can I expect from you? First, if you need a scroll with a divine spell, I have a lot of them. Something for every emergency. Second, while you're at the camp, I can read any scroll for you. Guaranteed, no surprises. And you'd better not leave the camp without a cleric. I won't be going with you. So you'll need someone else who can read scrolls. Go, and may Abada protect you. Go. So will you talk to? Let's see what we can do. Wait, that other thing was fighting last time? No. I don't have any. Can I see what? Yep. Save again. Hello? So, what do you reckon about everything that's come crashing down on us? All the responsibility, the command, this new power? First one sounds too cocky, but this is what I was born for. Um, I haven't figured it out yet. We'll see what happens next. Uh, it's a little overwhelming, to be honest. Uh, we'll go with two. Um, I haven't figured it out yet. We'll see what happens next. Watching and waiting is a good strategy. Probably. Uh, okay. Um, I didn't mean it like that, but okay. <laughs> I'm still frightened by what happened in the Grey Garrison. Were we really chosen? By Ayomade herself? <laughs> you know, back when I was a snot-nosed kid who just started down the path to becoming a paladin, I imagined once or twice that I was going to do something heroic. The lights would shine down on me, the trumpets would sing, I'd hear the voice of the goddess, or at least her herald, you know? I'd be informed that I had been chosen for a great cause. But that's the point where my imagination always failed me. Somehow, it really happened. Without all the trumpets or the herald or even anyone explaining what I had to do. Though it's clear as day, my place is here. In this demon-ridden wound. Quite a lovely war going on, in fact. Endless, I hear. I'm gonna need some time to wrap my head around this. <sighs> Spare me an hour and I'll crawl into some dark corner and whine about my hard lot. What can I tell you? I cry easily. Alright, um... 
Thanks for speaking. Sina smiles. See you. This is not Good days and clear okay. skies. What do you say? Where are we off to today? How about covering myself in glory and becoming the hero of a hundred ballads? I don't. W I always right. liked be. Sina smiles. Okay. See you. Now these guys. What did Sila call us? The League of the Inspiring Cart. I wish I could we could set up an official knightly order with that name. I wonder when I'll see a real battle. Everything so far has been just a warm up. Yeah. The knight is so absorbed in reading the letter that he takes no notice of you or anything around him. He smiles and seems like he's about to kiss the paper. Alright. Uh. Here you guys. Actor, yep. Hey brother, you're looking pretty thin. All this mess has made you lose weight. You've got to eat. Or we'll look like a pear in that long coat of yours. Is he talking to me? Okay. I'd rather shove horse shit than... Rather shove a horse shit than soldier's grub. That shit smells better. Wouldn't be surprised if it tastes better too. Okay, they don't like the food. Um, finally, a serious dramatic piece in our hands. Um, sounds... Master is the most underrated profession. That's what I'd say. Uh -huh. um, Camellia. Greetings. The neat smile on Camellia's lips disappears so quickly you almost wonder if you imagined it. Oh. Hey. Did we interrupt something? Um. What do you think of the powers you received from me? Received from me? Um, okay. Camellia shrugs nonchalantly. People of noble descent grow accustomed to ample opportunity. The powers I received from you are useful, but I see no point in treating them with excessive piety. Okay. I won't keep you. The dawning smile on Camellia's face freezes and quickly dies away. Okay. Uh, let me talk to you for a bit. Horgus Worm has been expecting you, thumbs stuck in his belt. There you are. I've been waiting. As you see, I too have joined the crusade. No, I don't I'm... know how to swing the sword. But war is costly, and I have money. Besides, my intellect and business sense may prove useful even on the battlefield. Oh, I saw him hustling up the vendor dude before to make sure he's doing his job properly. So yeah, the business side of thing there, you can help, it looks like. Besides, besides, I believe, Horgus shifts awkwardly from foot to foot. I believe I owe you an apology. What for? The way I behaved was rude, ill-mannered. You are an honest and honorable person. You have clawed your way up from the bottom of society to the title of Knight Commander, okay, and you so are friends so with Queen Galfrey herself. Okay. <laughs> Such That's... persistence deserves respect. Mm. Horgus tilts his head in a brief acknowledgement of your merits. Please allow me to give you this magic amulet from my humble personal treasury. To mark our future cooperation. It could be also because we kept we keeping his secrets as well, so he trusts us. Um Okay. Tell me the story of Horus Grimm again. 
I will repeat it if you ask, but you know it all already. And I'll only repeat it out of respect for you. I prefer to recall the story as infrequently as possible. Um, My real name is that, Darian W. Yeah, we've known, when I was... Yeah, Crusaders again, came again. from the nearest city to aid us, but I was the like only one who survived. Like under someone's name. We've done that. Envy, unfortunate, off, so but now I still up. serve Holger Squirrel. I will defend my good name to the end. Your claims will seem like vi With all due respect, that's none of your business. I have my re- Anyway, why would you think I never supported the Crusaders? Perhaps I simply don't like to brag about my donations. Lean Ostentatious that, yep. charity only attracts beggars. D and before you start telling me- Horgus pierces you with a long, heavy stare. I'm not going to tell you about that. Some things ought to remain private. What can you tell me about the Count? The Noble of Canabra should be equated with each other, shouldn't they? He is a brilliant young man with a brilliant pedigree. And that story of his. The nobility is the glue that keeps our society together. I suppose that is why demons so often choose their estates as primary targets. Who would notice the demons' bloody massacres if they only slaughtered poor country folk? The Arunde family shared the tragic plight of the Gworms. Along with many other members of the nobility, they fell victim to a treacherous attack during a major celebration taking place at their family estate. I hadn't received an invitation and was slightly insulted by the snub, but it oh. turned out to be a blessing in disguise. The gods saved me from a terrible fate, all the guests died that day from a magical demonic disease. I sympathize with the Count deeply. He has endured so much, and it's no wonder he keeps himself aloof from me. I think this is due to the fact that Horgus Squirm's fate so resembles his own, and we both have to relive those horrible memories whenever we see each other. The Count was really young then, as far as I understood, so he wouldn't have been the one handing out invitations, I doubt it. Um, who knows? I don't know. Um, I have to go. Um... Right, let's talk to you again. Prayer something. Waldif gives you a friendly wave. Hey, Chief. Wanna talk? What, what do you think of my new powers? Waldif pauses to think, rubbing his chin. You mean what you did back there? I have a few ideas. We could send you to a Pitarch's underground arena to fight. Give you a scary name like Swift Sting or something like that. Give you a great cover story, enemies burned down your house, you're avenging your dead family, the public eats that stuff up. You'll wear a shiny, eye-catching outfit, or a black one if you like black better. Hmm. It's about the show and everything, you go with the shiny one, I guess. <laughs> we'll split the prize money 60 forward slash 40. 60 for me, of course. What? You know, arranging fights isn't easy. Those people are tough. Bit. I'll be taking more risk than you. And after we get set up in Pitarks, <laughs> we'll tour different cities, make some real money. What? You don't like the sound of it? Do you have any other suggestions? Waldif grins, his yellow eyes lighting up. I got one more. Have you heard of Rasmiran? It's some land in the River Kingdoms ruled by a King Razmir. A friend of mine used to live in Razmiran, he got out of there as fast as he could. Long story short, this King Razmir of theirs is a god. He keeps his people under his heel, they're all terrified of what he might do. He sits on his throne wearing some white mask, giving power to anyone. Come and take power from me, he says, so long as you believe in me. Hmm. Waldif quickly checks that no one is eavesdropping. But that friend of mine, the one who fled, has a half-sister on his old man's side who's a cook in the castle, and a washerwoman who the cook plays cards with in the evenings told her a juicy rumor. Word is, Razmir isn't a real god at all, and he's got no powers. So, here's my point, you do have powers, pretty scary ones, too. 
We'll find some shabby little kingdom, I'll start some rumors, you'll show off a few tricks to wow the locals, and that's it. We'll make you a deity. But first I want you to put it in writing that I'll be your chief advisor. I'm not doing anything just on the nod, I've been there, people promise you mountains of gold, and then when it comes to it, they are all, get lost, or I'll set the dogs on you. So, do you like the idea? this choice but I want more good alignment um, just to get it up I, I don't when I go to Lich I know I have to work it back this way but it'll drop me down but hmm got myself a good and see people that's disgusting uh, cleaning privies anyway. is disgusting Deceiving an entire kingdom is an art. You're not appreciating what it is I'm offering you, Chief. I don't make offers like that to just anyone, you know. Yeah, well, we kind of be doing that anyway. Uh... Waljif shrugs. Whatever, you're free to do as you please. Yeah, um... The choices I make also affect Ember, it seems, as well, for alignment, um, eventually. Um, you know, very much going towards that way too much. Uh, I go more towards the lore, I think, than good. Um, Hmm. You almost went too far to close to neutral, I have. Hmm. Waljif gives you a friendly wave. Waljif shrugs. What? Mm -hmm, you? Mm -hmm. The bearded core. What's this thing I got anyway? Whenever the wearer of this amulet uses a hex, the DC of the saving throw against it is increased by one. Oh. Use hexes. I haven't actually given you anything to use yet, really. Wow. Um, same with you. Oh what? Um, no one else can use this though. Um, hmm. I really need more defensive stuff on this on my character because I'll be going as an off tank basically. Ah, oh, blacksmith. We haven't talked to you yet. Ah. What's the difference between this one and the other guy? Seems to... This one doesn't even sell magical stuff. The other guy did. Somewhere? I don't know. Um, here at Beth, we'll talk to you. 
Commander, allow me to say something. Tirabeth looks even more serious than usual. Before you. This wasn't a war. It was agony, drawn out over decades. No one believed in victory anymore. When the demons attacked the city, for some it was a relief. At least the end had come. They laid down their weapons and surrendered without a fight. You've done a lot of stuff as well. I felt the same thing, but I somehow got through on stubbornness and the vague hope that if nobody found Anivia's body, she might by some miracle have survived. And that miracle was you. You returned my beloved to me when I'd nearly lost all hope of seeing her alive again. Then you went on a suicide mission to the Grey Garrison and won the city back for us. You turned a defeat into a victory. I know it wasn't easy, but you make everything seem so effortless. You do everything just like that. She says with a snap of her fingers. The Queen believes in your powers too. But for me, they are just more proof of what I felt that day when I saw Anivia alive, standing next to you. You're the miracle we've been waiting for. You're the one who will finally put an end to this terrible war, and in spite of everything, deliver us the victory we so desperately need. With you, I'm sure this crusade will achieve what the others could not. Mm. Oh yes, uh, I found a scar scabbard with your family name on it, in the Grey Garrison. Tirabeth looks down. This scabbard held the solemn hour, my family sword. My father once fought with it, and I took it when I left home to become a paladin. Alas, it was not stolen. I parted with my heirloom willingly, to help someone dear to me. Anivia needed expensive healing, and, having no other way to procure the money, I pawned my father's sword. I think he would have understood, I'm sure he would have given up everything to help the family. I hoped to redeem the Solemn Hour eventually, but there was never enough money, and soon the sword disappeared from the pawn shop altogether. I have no idea who took it. Seems like I'll have to part with my father's sword forever. Is Anivia sick? You'll forgive me if I don't go into detail, it is a private matter. Suffice to say, everything is fine now. The treatment was costly, but it was worth it. Though, do we have to find a weapon as well? Or, um, it. Alright, I'm not going to do the lawful yet. It's hard to Yeah. I can see that you truly love her. A delicate blush appears on Tirabetha's cheeks. She nods silently. Tirabeth lovingly traces the name imprinted in silver on the scabbard's leather. My parents were loyal servants, yet it wasn't enough to earn them a title or a coat of arms. Still, however humble our name might be, it is worth something. I don't know if I'll ever see the solemn hour again, but at least I have its scabbard back. Thank you. Uh, look for a sword or weapon, whatever that was, I guess maybe come along with this um so it turns out that the queen has her head encounter intelligence watching me i wonder why um yeah so it turns out the queen has her head of Counterintelligence watching me, I wonder why. You think the Queen doesn't trust you? If that were true, she wouldn't have put you in charge of this army. My main task is to be your advisor until you've gained enough experience as a commander. As for counterintelligence, Anivia and I were tasked with keeping an eye on your inner circle. But you're not under suspicion, Commander. You're under our protection. Okay. I didn't realize that was to do with them, but okay. Uh, we need reinforcements. Can you get us more soldiers? 
Tirabeth frowns. When we began the march on Drazen, we chose speed over numbers. If I order more volunteers to be recruited, they simply won't arrive in time. We could pay mags to deliver the troops to the camp, except I doubt that our army's coffers could afford it. If you can spare seven and a half thousand gold coins, I will see to our reinforcements. Okay. Uh, pay seven and a half thousand gold coins, I guess. Consider it done. It's hard to believe your origin is so humble. You deserve a noble title more than any, than many who inherit them. Tirabetha's cheeks blush a little. Thank you, Commander. It is an honor to hear that, especially from you. Every noble family begins somewhere. You must have heard the recent story from the stolen lands in the River Kingdoms. Just imagine, coming from nowhere and making it all the way to a royal crown in just a few years. That means one of them will have to have a child to pass the family name on though. Um, you'd think. Sometimes I wonder what would happen if I managed to distinguish myself somehow. But then I push away such unworthy, selfish thoughts, of course. We don't fight for rewards. The fate of the world is at stake. And yet, Tirabetha's blush deepens and she falls silent. Alright, I have to go. Tirabeth says goodbye with a short bow. So, I used a fair bit of gold and mustard. Um, same here. Anything new? Yep. New again. So, that was unavailable for us, and now it was available. I guess. can handle it. Ember is bobbing her head and humming a tune. She greets you with a carefree, cheerful smile. Her wandering eyes linger on you for just a moment before darting off again into the distance. Uh, how are you handling your new abilities? Abilities. The girl tilts her head to her shoulder. What are you talking about? Uh... Oh. The tricks you learned when the big grey house blew up. <laughs> They're funny. Thanks for teaching them to me. <clears throat> the Queen gave me the title of Knight Commander and put me in charge of an, of an army. What do you think about that? The elf focuses her wandering gaze on your eyes, smiles and shakes her head. Don't believe titles. All of us in the world are children of the street. Barefoot, hungry, scared. A step away from death. Some imagine they're strong and rich, like gods. But don't forget who you really are, behind the title. So go. The uh, elf watches you with a radiant smile as you leave. Hmm. Let's check out this girl's house again. Oh, she's in here this time.
Knight Commander. How can I help? There is much I can do, just ask. Nura looks at you with eyes filled with enthusiasm. She's holding a notebook and a traveler's inkwell. Uh, tell me about yourself. Oh my. I could tell you so many amazing things, and you choose the most boring one of all. But alright, about myself then. Where are you from? Ischia. A small piece of land that proudly calls itself a country, though it hasn't been independent for a single day in all the centuries it's existed. They have a lot of national pride, but all of it is borrowed. Always looking to the great day when they can at last be free from the rule of Jaliax. Jaliax. Infernal Jaliax remains one of the most powerful military nations in the Inner Sea region. Its control of the Arch of Aroden, the passage between the Inner Sea and the Arcadian Ocean, also gives it a vital role in much of the region's trade. Nevertheless, as important as the nation may be today, it pales in comparison to its former imperial glories. Today, Chiliac suffers from extreme diabolism and tyranny, which prevent it from truly achieving its full potential. Internal observers, including the new nobility of Chiliac, firmly believe that Asmodeus and Hell serve Chiliac and assist in maintaining the power necessary for Chiliac to assume its rightful role among the leading nations of the Inner Sea. Okay, so they're like slaves, basically, almost. Yes. The history love talking politics. If two of them start bargaining over beats at the market, you can be sure that they'll end up arguing about whether an independent Istja will be a monarchy or a republic. I've always found it funny to listen to, and a little disgusting. Mm. You see, there are a lot of us halflings in the country but very few are citizens. Most are slaves. Yeah. Okay, so she came from slave... I mean a slave, I guess? I was lucky. I've always been clever, ever since I was little, so they sent me to school instead of making me do the grunt work. They taught me to count and write, and I was sold as a secretary to Lord Axela Tresbert. Ah. He's the one I left Istja with, never to return, I hope. How did you come to serve Queen Godfrey? I was a slave of Lord Axela Tresbert in Istja, my homeland. Oh, what a man he was. He towered over his fellows like a rock over a garbage heap. A true hero. He bought me as a simple secretary, but he made me learn the history of the world wound, all of it, one volume after another. He hired tutors for me, even sent me to meet prominent historians. He didn't want a simple slave, but a slave with an impeccable education. Who does she serve? This guy still or...? Lord Tresbert was going on a crusade. He firmly believed that the servants of the good gods were weak, and only a follower of Asmodeus could stand against the demon invasion. He took me along as a secretary, a historian, and, most importantly, he entrusted me with recording his glorious story for future generations. In his crusade, Lord Tresbert performed many brave feats, but even he could not stand against the world wound alone. In his final battle with the demons, when my lord realized he was doomed, his final act was to cover my retreat, so that I could tell the world of his great deeds. Some people have said what he did was not heroic, just an arrogant moron puffing himself up one last okay. time, but I say curse their tongues. Okay. Well, he sacrificed his life so he could get away, but he was just to write his story. So, saved your life. Um. 
My difficult journey ended in Mendev, where I found my freedom. No. There I published Lord Tresbert's biography and... I don't want to boast but... Ah, who am I kidding? Of course I do. The book sold in great numbers, and made me rather famous for a time. That's what brought me to the Queen's attention. She invited me to her court. After all, she was curious about my deceased lord, and she was in great need of an expert on the history of the world wound. I hope you will find me useful as well. So, you, I guess she made money as well from it? Um, doesn't say anything about that. Um, so, you're not just a historian, but a writer too. Will you write a book about my crusade? Um, ha ha. Why not? As soon as we finish off the demons, I'll get right to it. Just take care that you don't end up like Lord Tresbert. <laughs> uh, do you worship any deity? She makes a wry face. When I was a slave in Ischia, they would beat mm. me with a stick to force me into believing in Asmodeus. They hit me and said it was for my own good. Ever since then I don't like temples. Understandable. Does that mean her person who also served this devil? She seems to have respect for him. Hmm. Asmodeus, also known as the King of Hell, Master of Witches, and Prince of Law, is the most powerful of the nine archdevils that inhabit Hell, and the only one of Hell's rulers to claim full divinity. It is he who is credited with penning the contract of creation, in which his followers believe is hidden the means for their patron's eventual rise to supremacy. I realize there are different gods, like Desna or Kaidan, who teach goodness and freedom. But it's just. As soon as I smell frankincense, I see the slave driver's stick. Maybe one day I'll be able to turn to a deity without cringing from a blow for not being reverent enough. But for now. For now I let others pray for me. Nura's smile trembles and collapses. Well, the slave driver's stick... Is a thing, no matter what religion, I guess, yeah. Um, in different ways. All about control is what they are. <laughs> Nero wanted oh. to add something, but decided to let the painful subject drop. Ah, okay. You're welcome. If you have that. any questions, come back. I want to get that check. Um, Alright, let's change to this one on. That might make a difference. Knight Commander. How can I help? There is much I can do. Just... Oh my. Ischa. The Ischa. I was lucky. I've always been clever. I was a slave of... Lord Tr in my difficult journey ended in Mendev, where I found my freedom. Ha ha. She makes a wry face. I realize there are different. Nura sounds sincere, but you feel that she's holding something back. Hmm. The other one said she was going to say something. This didn't say anything though. Just tells you she's holding something back. Um, I realize there are different gods like this and who teach the goodness and freedom, but 
It's just as soon as I smell frankincense, I see a slave driver stick. Well, maybe one day I'll be able to turn to a deity without cringing from a bloat for not being reverent enough. But for now, I let others pray for me. Smile trembles and collapses. Hmm. Uh, thank you for your answers. You're welcome. But you should ask me about something more interesting. Tell me about the history of the world wound. Oh, I could talk about that for hours. What exactly do you want to know? Tell me about old Sarkros. Sa it was an unforgiving country, inhabited by numerous tribes of Kelid barbarians. Imagine Numeria but without the metal mountains, or the realm of the mammoth lords, but with a milder climate, that's Sarkaris. The country was ruled by priests of forgotten deities and shamans. It's said that even back then, before the world wound, the boundary between worlds was especially thin in this region. Since ancient times, Discari has had his claws sunk deep into the minds of the locals. His cults thrived here for many centuries. Aroden tried to stamp them out, but in the end, of course, he passed away. How did the world wound come to be? It happened the year Aroden died, 4606, a little over a century ago. No one knows if the timing was coincidental or if there's some connection with Aroden's death. But I'll tell you what we do know. The priests and shamans who ruled Sarkaris hated arcane magic and all who practiced it. Wizards and sorcerers were driven from the land, or worse. One of their prisons held a witch named Aurelia Vols. We know nothing about her besides her name, and of course, the atrocity she committed. By some unknown method, she managed to harness the terrible power of the demon Lord Discari. Together they tore open the barrier between worlds, opening a rift to the abyss in the very middle of Sarkaris. The world wound slowly but mercilessly expanded, devouring more and more land. In a matter of years, Sarkaris was a memory. After a moment of silence, Nura adds softly, Sometimes I think, what did they do to Aurelia in that prison? Just imagine, she was ready to give herself to the abyss, if only the demons might devour her torturers along with her. To imagine such hatred, it terrifies me. Okay, she's sympathetic towards the person who opened the world wound, which seems to be a demon now. And she worshipped demons. Well, the prince, of, yeah, something or other. Hmm. That's starting to sound to go together. Tell me about the First Crusade. It began in 4622. Yes, go. it took the church and the secular authorities nearly two decades and hundreds of thousands of lives before they decided to take action. In the meantime, Sarkaris was only supported by handfuls of volunteers. By the time the crusade began, the demons had already invaded Mendev. The crusaders pushed them back, in what must have seemed a total triumph at the time, the forces of good easily crushing the demons on all fronts. They erected Drizzen on the lands they conquered, an indestructible fortress, and the capital of the crusader movement. In 4630, eight years after it began, the First Crusade was declared victorious. It was the first triumph of the Crusaders. And, unfortunately, the last. Okay, so the First Crusade, all right, yep. I thought it was also a failure, it mustn't have been. Tell me about the Second Crusade. In 4638, the world wound suddenly started expanding and a new wave of demons appeared. The Crusaders were all but delighted. Last time, <laughs> they'd routed the forces of the Abyss and they welcomed another chance to prove themselves. But this time, everything was different. Hmm. Instead of scattered gangs, they faced a large and organized army. Drizzen was besieged, and the Crusaders lost all the lands they'd won back before. 
They had to retreat, and all that remained of Sarkaris was left to the demons. But while the monsters were devouring the unprotected lands, the Crusaders erected a chain of wardstones along the border with the world wound. We have Iomade and her herald to thank for their help. It was the Second Crusade's only victory, but it halted the wound's growth. The catastrophe had become a stalemate, at the cost of tremendous sacrifice. Tell me about the Third Crusade. About 50 years after the opening of the world wound, Discari found an ally. Baphomet entered the war, a cunning, insidious demon lord who prefers deception to open conquest. He sets his enemies against each other, and lures the virtuous onto the path of wickedness. Traitors appeared among the Crusaders, secret agents of his cult. For a time, no one suspected a thing, even as they watched helplessly as the Crusader movement fell to ruin. Where once Vela proudly stood, now greed and dumb cruelty reigned, and outrage was drowned in apathy. In 4665, the church announced a new crusade, hoping to boost morale. They didn't succeed, to put it mildly. Some fought the demons in earnest, and for a time they even dared hope to retake Drizzen. But the Third Crusade would be remembered as a witch hunt, in every sense. Inquisitors hoped to purge any cultists from the ranks of fighters, but instead they got a barrage of denunciations, widespread suspicion, and innocent victims. It sometimes happened that two orders would denounce each other as traitors and wipe each other out, much to the demon's delight. Just three years later, in 4668, the church put the disgrace to an end. Of all the Crusades, that one was the least glorious. Tell me about the Fourth Crusade. Of course, the demons had no intention of sitting quietly caged behind the ward stones. They kept attacking Kenabras, trying to reach the stone and destroy it. Or just scratch its surface. Or, if even that wasn't possible, before it. The Crusaders drove the demons away from the city, again and again. The Fourth Crusade would last for 15 years, an exhausting study in positional warfare. The demons attacked, and they were pushed back. The Crusaders went on the offensive, but were forced to retreat. And all the while, the losses were tremendous. The Fourth Crusade's only achievement was that they didn't let a single ward stone fall. They didn't retake a sliver of land, to say nothing of Drizzen. So many lives, just to maintain the stalemate. You can imagine how that affected morale. Thank you for your answers. My pleasure. You just have to remember to stop me, or I'll go on about it forever. Okay. I'll ask for the next thing. If you have first. any questions, come back. Yeah. All How right. can I help? I'll be glad to help in any way I can. But how? That's the question. Saving because I didn't want to have to go through the check again that I got before. Um, you probably heard about the wound I have and... The one that sometimes opens on my chest. Can you perhaps tell me if it is some kind of demonic curse? Yes, indeed. I've been told of your affliction. Neur appears at the center of your chest. Can you will the wound to open? No. That's a shame. What can you tell me about this wound? Well, it's difficult to say. I know of blades that leave never healing cuts, of poisons that stop wounds from healing, I've heard of witches' curses that are rewarded with eternal wounds. But wounds that seem to reopen and heal over and over. Home. Perhaps have you, you know of other cases like this? Home, let's think. In 4671, a Mendivian army corporal had all his bones and cartilage turned to glass. In 4700 a scribe in Kenabras had all her skin simply come away like she'd been boiled. And in 4638, oh, you don't happen to have insects crawling over you. Locusts. No. Rats, perhaps. Home. 
too bad. Nura looks at you with genuine regret. Hmm. Do you think it's dangerous? It most likely is dangerous, but you are under the protection of Iomade, Commander. She granted you mythic power, as they say. Maybe. Surely the Inheritor would not leave you to face this alone. Have you, perhaps, noticed that the wound opens at moments when you waver in your faith? Perhaps it is triggered by doubt. Frowning, Nura looks at you with sincere concern. Thank you for your answers. I'm sorry I couldn't tell you anything useful. I will be sure to study this matter and consult a few of my encyclopedias. If you have any questions, come back. Hmm. What's his dog doing in here? Hmm. Where is Lan? Oh, he's down here. Huh. Why is this dog in... Hmm. Weird. Get back in there and see if it's still there. Yeah, it is. It's weird. Beautiful. Killer nods approvingly. You've earned the title of commander. Kenabra still stands thanks to you. But you'll have to be doubly on your guard. Your eminence places a target on your back, and there are assassins about. Killing a high-ranking crusader would bring a demon far more prestige than killing a common soldier. Not long ago, I stymied a few of the Spinner of Nightmares' attempts on the lives of influential crusaders, so I know what I'm talking about. Which influential crusaders did you save from the Spinner of Nightmares? I'd been hunting the Spinner of Nightmares for over a year. My agents, by that time I'd created a proper network, reported to me that she'd returned to Nerogion. I immediately suspected that she was planning a great atrocity. By that time, I'd learned all too well that the Spinner was master of illusions and charms. That's why I never left the house without this. Hiller takes a monocle from his pocket and puts it on carefully. This is the Eye of Truth. It allows me to see through illusions. My friend got it from the priests of Nethys. However, neither this monocle nor my network of agents were adequate to prevent the attacks, and we were nearly too late. I need to talk to the sword as well. Um. The Spinner of Nightmares decided to strike at the Cruciform Cathedral. They had gathered to celebrate the victory of the First Crusade. It was a great holiday, and there was a lavish ceremony at the cathedral. An influential priest, Anthoclitus, was in charge of the festivities. They were intending to crown him with a tiara, a symbol of his high status. But the sacred tiara had been replaced. The spinner had obtained an incutilis, a sentient and rather ominous cephalopod from the other end of the world. She'd raised it from an elva, and trained it carefully. And she cast an illusion on it so that everyone would see it as a tiara. The moment its shell was placed on Anthoclitus's head, the cephalopod would release its tentacles and penetrate the priest's skull. Its poison would seep into his brain, and it would seize control over Anthoclitus's dead body. Fortunately, we were able to stop this madness in time. 
I spotted the spinner of nightmares in the crowd, chased her down, and we ended up crossing swords on the roof of the cathedral. I nearly defeated her, but she fled upon a giant stallion, which was able to run across the air as if it were on the ground. I was so close to catching her. She'd suffered a setback, but I let her escape. Hilla's bitter and angry smile shows he hasn't made peace with his failure. Tell me about your confrontation with the spinner. Not it's good. a long story. Telling you everything would take two days. Which part do you want to know? It all began with a task of the Pathfinder Society. I arrived in Nerosian with my team to investigate the sudden death of a famous crusader, Baron Foran. We soon focused in on a small hospital for the wealthy, where Foran was being treated shortly before his death. It turned out that a gang of Baphomet's cultists, calling themselves the Labyrinth of Mind, had gotten a foothold at the hospital. They were obsessed with twisting the minds of their victims, and targeted fragile people too weak to resist. The hospital was filled with perfect victims, isolated for weeks from the outside world completely helpless. And when they returned, they were different. Almost normal. But the moment they heard a certain phrase, something dark awoke in their mind, and they transformed into servants of Baphomet, ready to lie, betray, and even kill. The labyrinth of mind was preparing to infiltrate all the elite circles in Mendev. But Baron Foran stopped them. He was too loyal to his oath, and too resistant to their spells. He fought for his freedom until the strain broke his heart. We opened and cleaned the city of Baphomet's pit of vipers. Their den was a cradle of sin and filth. They cast spells on each other, and their loathsome fantasies stepped real from their minds into the world. They dreamt of horrible and forbidden things, and they fought like mad. We burned the place to the ground, and slaughtered everyone we could. But the leaders of the cult were able to flee and they were set upon revenge. They abducted my daughter Lowey, who served under my command in the Pathfinder Society. They left me a note full of tart insults, mockery, and sneers. From that note I learned the name of my enemy, the Spinner of Nightmares. A few months later, I confirmed that she was the leader of the Labyrinth of Mind. My hunt had begun. I would get Lowry back at any cost. Hilla grits his teeth with bulldog determination. Awesome I'd been hunting the spinner of nightmares for over a year. My agents, by that time I'd created a proper network, reported to me that she'd returned to Nerosian. I immediately... Yeah. I was so close to catching her. As you wish, Commander. Good luck. Watch your back. Only trust your closest friends. The enemy is cunning and treacherous. What brings you here? What do you think of what happened in the Grey Garrison? Do you feel any change in yourself? It's hard not to notice when the demons start running away from you like a flock of frightened bats. Powers granted by Iome Day to defeat demons. Lan raises his hand above his head and pensively scratches behind his single horn. Since I was a kid, I've taken whatever I've been given and used it as best I can. Anything goes when you're trying to survive. It doesn't matter where your blessings come from. We can think about that when we're old, if we live that long. But you know, this time even I'm not so sure. A divine power that just appears out of nowhere. Sooner or later we'll have to pay for it. I'd like to know what the price will be. True. Make a good point. Thank you for your answer so long. Uh, this way.
me here, and in here. Play it again. You're the last one, I think. Oh, and then actually, well, I remember. Let's start with you. Want to chat? I'm always up for a chin wag. Huh. You know what? I'm gonna say this and see if it does anything bad. You talk too much, it's annoying. You're a weapon, nothing more. Whoa, what's this all about? Watch what you're saying, or I might take it personally. I'm sorry I overreacted. HMPH. Alright. Just don't overreact again, is all I ask. Okay, that, all right, that's I hear, dismiss him, I guess. If you feel like chatting, I'm always here. Uh, um, yeah, we're gonna load a driver one. That choice picked. Um, what's that? Something happened. Beautiful. I don't see anything highlighted. Does it say I found anything? But anyway. Alright, let's talk to you. Ah, boy, there you are. Very good, just in time. You will be delighted to know that I need you for an experiment. So, the Grey Garrison stands roofless. Demons are running for the hills with their tails between their legs. Mendev's queen, what's her name? It's on the tip of my... Ah yes, Galfrey, is scurrying to and fro, and all this is somehow connected to you, my loyal follower. Thus far there is no scientific evidence of your exceptionality, if one discounts blind faith in divine intervention, which I do. We... People of science, refuse to believe in the inexplicable without any proof. We are the ones who explain the inexplicable. Ninio punctuates her statement with an energetic sweep of her arm. And therefore, open your mouth and say, ah, ah for me. Yeah, let's play along with this. Um, open your mouth, ah. Ninio peers into your mouth with a practiced eye. All right, your throat's fine, tongue looks perfectly normal. Your breath. She sniffs. <laughs> the smell is in line with the regular functioning of the digestive system. Now for your teeth. She sticks one hand in your mouth and probes each of your teeth in turn with the skill of a seasoned dentist. No detectable alterations. By the way, did you know that many individuals, while being wholly civilized representatives of their races, still have an amazingly powerful bite? As if suddenly recalling something, Nino promptly pulls her hand out of your mouth. <laughs> oh. If someone gets on my nerves, I can bite hard enough too. Can you? We definitely must test that someday. Really? But not today. <laughs> now we are conducting an experiment of a different kind. Moving on. All right, what do we have next? Ears. Let's check your hearing. Testing. Nino yells right in your ear and nods in satisfaction as she observes your reaction. Your hearing is fine. Was fine. But don't worry, it's scientifically proven that it should return to normal soon. Okay. Next. Nino circles you. Eyes are clear. Posture is satisfactory. Limb length is standard. No lice. She stops rubs her chin in contemplation and, in a slightly dejected tone, says, Boy, you are the picture of health. It's a pity, I was expecting to find some anomaly. 
Well, now let's assess your mental state. I think you need some medical studies. Imagine a hypothetical situation. You are a tree. Two squirrels have found their way into your oh hollow and are now copulating there. What do you do? Um. Uh, I'll do precisely nothing because I'm a tree. An unconscious act of withdrawal along with a lack of trust in your own abilities. Hmm. Or perhaps, just a healthy dose of pragmatism. On to the next question. Another hypothetical situation, you are a tomato. You have just been picked from the vegetable patch and put into a crate. <laughs> you know that today the cook will use half of the tomatoes from your crate to make soup. What do you do? Uh, there's nothing I can do, I'm a tomato, remember? Aha, aha, an unconscious act of withdrawal. Inability or unwillingness to see something bigger behind something small. All right. I understand. On the surface, it appears you don't really believe in your ability to change things. But in fact, you are a strong pragmatist who knows perfectly well what you can and can't do. Your reasoning is that of a mortal, one who is capable of achieving a great deal, though he would deny even that. I know this is a magical world, but still... Um... Hmm... On that note, I deem this experiment complete. Thank you for your participation. Nino looks at you pensively and then gestures at you with a wide sweep of her arm. And yet you remain a puzzle to me. I love puzzles. One of these days I will solve you completely. Unless I forget. We're trying to solve you as well. <laughs> now I have time to answer your questions. Come on, ask away. Um... I have got no art questions for you from the looks of it. I have to go. Okay, that's every single one of my companions talk to. And I can't see anyone else. Let's see what we can do. Oh, there's dogs back here. Here we go. Why did it go in here? It was just a bug? Hmm. I can handle it. It's not like you... <clears throat> hmm. Alright. Let's do a hard save. Who'd take with us? I have a quest with you. I have a quest with you. Quest with you. Ah.
really cool. I don't know if I need you right now. Other than as an off tank, but hmm. Oh, did I not give him his mythical level yet? Domain and possible domain community. The ward lasts for one hour per level in this class, so oh, wow. Hmm. So it's recommended in my notes. times per day is it three plus your wisdom okay earth that was plus four oh what uh you now have control of armies on the world okay
fruit. Can I get different ones? Oh, yeah. this one. Two grand.
Oh. Pichu. <clears throat> hmm. Okay, so it's worth recruiting a few generals, I think. So I've got a wizard already. What I think is a wizard. Get magic. Um, the general. I saw the fighter one, it didn't really look that great for the most of the defensive stuff. Uh, we 
from the enemy units. Range up. I've done that with her. Uh, having defeated. Having defeated a band of cultists who had driven the captives from Kenabras and made the ruins of the Lhasa's gift their temporary base, the commander's army celebrates its first triumph. Unfortunately, the demon worshippers have killed all the citizens and gathered their belongings into a huge pile in the middle of the camp. Okay, I got 600 finance points. Yeah, there's going to be two grand to buy another one. Uh, I've got 11 movement points left. Uh, Let me again. No, yeah. I've got a thousand th points there, 750 here. Hmm. units in a 3x3 three three area become confused for one round. So siege abilities. Will enemy infantry ranged or cavalry units receive a minus 1 plus general's level penalty to AC. Saving throws. What? Okay, I see enemies. So it makes it AC, so they have less defense. So that'll be what, seven less AC. We're at level six. So he's on level one. No. Could be useful. I like increasing the size of the army units. You want another wizard?
I haven't really seen anything. It's the magic and the master of second level people. Hmm. I guess I should get one of these other ones. Hmm. These keep showing the same ones have the same abilities. I think they might be. Just trying to come up with them. It may not be random, but what that order believes they have. Hmm. Hmm. I like this one, but I'd rather hit the yeah. larger army size.
the hell we'll get this um... No. I'm not sure if I should have assigned her there actually. Ah, recall. Mm. Mm. Okay. So what's this? Uh, yeah, we'll do his one first. It's right next to us. Uh, it's back in Canabras. Do I have to go there for anything? I know there's supposed to be timed events, but you only have so many days to do things before, before other certain things we lose. Hmm. Do this because it sounds like time to then. I'm a bit fatigued. <clears throat> An elderly man limps toward a grave and clumsily throws a handful of soil inside. How unfair. They were all so young. They had their whole lives ahead of them. They sacrificed themselves, and an old cripple like me still lives. An elven woman with her face bathed in tears steps up to the grave. She whispers, the painting, it burned like everything else in the house. There is nothing left for me to remember you by. Nothing. A young man throws a handful of soil into the open grave and stands beside it for a while, lost in thought. Finally, he sighs and steps back. So Zil throws a handful of soil into the grave in front of him. He takes a breath and prepares to speak, but it seems that he simply cannot find the right words. The cleric wipes his tear-filled eyes, gathers his resolve, and says in a gentle voice, I wish you a warm welcome in Shlin's realm. We will win this war, I swear to you. We'll banish this ugliness and evil, make the world richer and let peace blossom in it. We'll make sure anything like this. This. He breaks into sobs mid-sentence, then falls silent without finishing his declaration. I don't really know anything about these people. <laughs> Alright, we'll go with the little one, I guess. Uh, you fought honorably and remain steadfast in your duties until you find a breath. Your deeds will not be forgotten. 
So Zil is too absorbed in his grief to hear you, but the other mourners aggressively raise their fists into the air, inspired by your words. Here we go. Glory to the heroes of the crusade. Never forget. What is that? An elven woman shrieks in horror, disrupting the atmosphere of silent mourning. Her trembling hand points at something moving inside a grave. Suddenly, a corpse climbs out of the ground, wafting a horrible stench from its rotting body. It's a zombie. Run. Okay. I shouldn't have run off. Yet uh, another obstacle. I'm gonna protect him. Uh, he's gonna lower my levels and everything. Be gone, fiend!
Oh, it says I'm yes, that bar's fixed up. Oops. What I just do? Oh, you're supposed to do that spell. Where the hell did it go? With a heavy heart, Sozil looks at the corpses of his friends, returned to rest by his own hand. What is this twisted mockery? Who could possibly... Wait, what's this? He bends down and recovers something from the ground. Take a look at this. Sozil hands off a black onyx gem to you, once precious. This stone is now covered in cracks falling apart in your grip as you examine the engraved Minotaur's head, the unholy symbol of Baphomet. The cleric's voice, perplexed at first, fills with rage as he speaks. Cultists. Simply murdering my friends was not enough for them. No, they had to come to the funeral and desecrate their graves. They will pay for it. Yeah. yeah. Do a little thing, I guess. They'll pay for everything they've done when we find them. You're right. They can't be far. We can't allow them to torture anyone else this way. Wait. The townspeople fled the undead without knowing they have a traitor among them. Wherever they are, they're in great danger. We must find them. Right. This here. You can wear it. Do your defense a little bit. Make the demons wait. Beautiful! 
No you reason can go to pause. Course, can't you? Yeah. The half-rotten corpse of a woman shambles out of the crypt. She leers at you with her empty eye sockets and croaks out a few words, thank the gods and thank you, too. I knew this was going to happen someday. They buried me alive. Uh, I hate to break it to you, but you're actually dead. How dare you? What utter foolishness. Do I look like a corpse to you? No, no, no. You forget yourself. You should be ashamed to say such things to it. The dead Baroness wags her finger at you in a chastising manner, but cuts herself short, staring at her own hand in horror. What? How? This simply cannot be. I shan't permit it. I need to turn this down, it's really loud for... ...the showing. I'm afraid it's true. I am truly sorry. This graveyard was desecrated by a necromancer. It seems that he disturbed your rest as well. The dead woman covers her face with what remains of her decaying hands. So, I died, but even in death the accursed servants of the abyss torment me. Can nothing be done? Perhaps you could lay me to rest. I quite enjoyed my life in this world, but now there is no place for me here. Not in this miserable form. How did you awaken? Do you remember anything? Allow me a moment to think. Seems like it, yes. Indeed, I awoke because I heard a voice. They were reciting poetry, or a prayer, perhaps. I suppose those were spells, then. It must have been your thrice damned necromancer. Would you like to pass on any words of comfort to your friends or family while you're here? That good for nothing band of hangers on. Most certainly not, thank you very much. I am reasonably confident that they have already brought my estate to ruin and squandered the fortune I bequeathed to them. They will have to do without my missives. Spare us both that indignity and embarrassment. You see, I would still be in the company of those I truly care for. Were it not for your discourteous sorcerer and his parlor tricks. Wow. Um. How should I know that? Hmm. Don't have a clue who her family is. Uh. Lay the undead to rest. Rest in peace. Thank you. Do feel free to take my burial jewelry. Those pieces are dreadfully out of fashion where I am going anyway. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> he has cure wounds on it, did we? Uh, Should I? Hmm. Is that a waste? Rules Jesus. are made to be broken. Huh. Okay. See what we can do. The mongrel did it. Thanks, Lan. You're so awesome, Lan.
Here we go. Let's have some fun. Fall! You've marched me to the bones today. I can handle it. There's a whole squad of undead guarding that door. Maybe we should look for another entrance. All right. Um, I would like the experience, but hmm. to make their own decision here, we'll save. Do not fear! Do not waver! Make the demons wait. Beautiful. Got this one. All right. All right. Uh, say it again. Who are you? What do you want? All of you have to do is die in the name of Bathomat. Have faith you can do it. 
don't you dare get away from me. Oh. This is the end of your blast. This magic, I won't let you harm the living or the dead anymore. Do you think I need your permission? Hey, you, bone bag, stand up and kill. I surrender. Stop. I give up, don't hit me. The young man in black robes throws his hands up in a dramatic gesture. Okay. You damned rat. How dare you. Suddenly, Sozil becomes a totally different person. The artist's delicate hands clench into fists, while his voice comes out as a menacing roar. He leaps at the necromancer and breaks his nose with a single blow. You scumbag. I remember you. You came to our temple begging for healing just a month ago. We fed you. We shared our table with you and took you in. Then you, you, I'll, I don't even know what I am going to do to you. Stop it. I surrender. You're Sozil ignores the necromancer's cries of pain, punching him right in the teeth. The necromancer spits blood but continues, fighting past the wild blows to his increasingly bruised and busted face, you are a priest of Shlin. I've surrendered, so you have to spare my life. Your goddess demands it. Um... Do you two know each other? Uh. Do you two know each other? Yeah. Uh. We do. That's Nati, a tailor's apprentice from Ken Arbors. <laughs> we healed him after he was mauled by a dog, then he became a frequent visitor to our temple. He listened attentively to our sermons, studied the goddess's teachings, and praised our art. So Zil grits his teeth. Were you lying to our faces the whole time? When we took you in? When you sat at our table? When we broke bread with you, were you planning to stab us in the back even then? The whole time. Now you understand part of it. Let's dig into the rest. The cultist curves his blooded lips into an evil sneer. I was hoping to lure you to our side, it wouldn't have been hard. We are everywhere, even inside you. I think you know it too. You are not like all those pious devotees. You pretended to be, and maybe you fooled yourself, but we both see who you really are. You have that same demonic rage inside you. It's a pity I never had time to kindle it into a devouring flame, but sometimes you have to resort to a backup plan. Having you die at the hands of your dead friends was such a good idea. It's a pity it didn't work. Shut up. Sozil swings his fist but stops it in midair. 
His clenched fist trembles as he stares at the cultist with an expression of pure hatred. You want to kill me right now, don't you? But you can't. You're a good boy, so zil, so loyal to your goddess. You will have to let me go or commit a sin, so I win either way. Witness the genius of our Lord Baphomet, ha ha. Is he telling the truth? Your religion doesn't allow you to kill him? Yes. The Eternal Rose is known for her grace. She teaches us to show mercy to anyone who asks for it. It's one mm. thing to slay an enemy in battle, but a captive. You must try to save their soul. To show them the beauty of the world. Persuade them to abandon the path of evil. It's difficult, but the world is better for it. I'm just repeating your own sermons back to you. Come on, Sozil, try to make me repent my sins. Perhaps your kind words will make me abandon Baphomet's teachings, run to Shlin for redemption, and start knitting some masterpieces of my own. The cultist smirks impudently. I don't think he's got interest in knitting. <laughs> uh... Hmm. Uh, we'll go with a good choice. Stop so so it's not worth breaking your goddess's vow because of the filth of filth like him. So Zil looks at the battered necromancer's face, then at his blooded hands in disgust. He slowly lowers and unclenches his fists. Thank you for stopping me. I almost broke my vows because of this. This. I had absolutely no idea there was so much rage in me. I... It's a shame, a disgrace, but I must admit that I enjoyed beating him. Forgive me for letting you see me like this. It should never have happened. So Zil wipes the necromancer's blood off his knuckles and steps away from him. You are the commander and he is your captive. It's up to you to decide his fate. I surrender. Here, take everything I've got, just don't kill me. The cultist turns out his pockets. Scroll of aid, okay. Uh... Hmm. I'm gonna go with four, I think, but I'm not sure I should still ask what to do with it. Right? That's gonna go with that choice. I will send a messenger with orders to imprison the cultists. His deeds will be punished to the fullest extent of the law. Yes, that's the right thing to do. The cleric lets out a sigh of relief. Thank you. Sozil examines the devastated graveyard, then diverts his attention to the terrified townspeople. It's all right. You're safe now. We should bury the bodies again. This is a place of peace and we must not leave it desecrated like this. The townsfolk are clearly terrified of even looking at the fallen undead, but Sozil's soft words reassure them. As they work together, the graveyard soon regains its tranquil appearance. After a prayer, Sozil bows his head before the graves of his friends for the last time. May the Eternal Rose grant them peace at last. Let's be on our way. 
We have many more innocents to protect from the horrors of this war. Hey. Loot back this way. Let's see what we can do. Not yet. Let's save some adventures for later. Ah, uh, folks are here, but then... talk to Sozal and see what he has to say now. Oh, so what was I can handle it. Oh, what's this? A message for the commander. A knight in simple armor lowers his voice. I'm the queen's bodyguard. She sent me to tell you she's arrived at Camp Incognito, as planned. You can find her where the minor knightly orders are camped. Come if you wish to speak with her. Uh, tell the Majesty I will come at once. Certainly. Okay. That's a lie, I'm gonna sell stuff first. The bearded queen. Change this camp, we've got to do a quick look around. Um, whoops. Beautiful. Let's see what we can do. Nothing in here. Oh. This Commander, 
Do you wish oh. to talk to me? I talked to to learn about the estate. He is going to celebrate his birthday at Heaven's Edge, so we can go there as a get there as guests. A celebration. That is far from ideal. True. It will be rather inconvenient for me to conduct the investigation with all the guests around. Mm. Thank you, nonetheless, was... Commander. When you decide was... to go to the estate, I will join you. I was thinking inconvenience because of that, but because it's his birthday or so, but yeah. Um any in... Nothing here. Just gotta keep a look at it each time we come to camp because things keep can change really easily without any missed stuff. Um each time new events happen since the Queen showed up, it's an event. Uh, would you s the Elf's shine Pale, for... beautiful face. Good uh, fortune you... to you. Well, that was. Here we go. All right, we'll talk to you then. So. Good afternoon, Commander. How can I help you? What? To be honest, I don't have much to tell. I had done little with already from Andoran. It can't be. The cleric smiles shyly. That's too grand a word for it. But yes, I love to paint and I know how to. Of course, a crusade isn't the best place for art. What I manage to draw here is at best sketches. I hope, when this war is over, I'll be able to turn them into real paintings. Fascinating, now I see your sketches. There is nothing special in them. But if you're... So Zil hands you a folder filled with pencil sketches. You recognize familiar fighters in some of the portraits. The cleric drew them without flattery, just as they are. But beneath the features that seem boring and even ugly in life, Sozil's hand has found inner beauty, power, and dignity. The tired faces of soldiers, covered with wrinkles and scars, resemble an army of angels. There are landscapes in the folder as well. At first you don't understand why these blooming hills, shady groves, and shimmering springs seem so familiar. But you have passed by these places as you traveled around the world wound though you saw them darkened and maimed by demonic influence. So Zil's pencil has restored them to their former beauty, which the demons stole from them, and which the Crusaders are fighting to return. Interesting. I already... Maybe I didn't do this. From Andoran. I grew up on the outskirts of Carpendon, a large, rich city, surrounded by gardens and vineyards. Just imagine, miles and miles of greenery and fragrant orchards. Sozil inhales with pleasure, as if he could still sense the aromas of his faraway homeland. My family had a small winery. I worked there from a young age, I pressed juice, did a little carpentry, painted, and one day I discovered I could do more with paint than simply cover walls with it. There was a temple of Shlin nearby. My brother and I would often spend our days there, listening to music and enjoying the stained glass windows. As a boy, my brother decided to devote himself to serving the Eternal Rose. Our parents hoped that at least I would remain to run the family business, but... He makes an apologetic gesture and flashes a disarming smile. It can't be helped, the goddess called me to. It's alright, I have plenty of cousins second cousins, and other relatives. When this war is over, I'll go back there and see how they're doing. Instead of working as a craftsman, he decided to serve deity in an interesting turn of fate. So Zil nods with a smile. Some clerics are proud of their tender hands, which have never touched anything heavier than a brush. But there's nothing ugly about hard-earned calluses. 
Indeed, I should say that saving the world is easier with strong hands. The smile disappears from Sozil's face, and he looks down, adding, I'm sorry these hands couldn't save the people who died in Kenabras. Hmm. How did you end up in Kenabras? A grim shadow falls over the cleric's face. I was hoping to find Trevor in the city. My brother. After my brother took his vows and was ordained a paladin of Shlin, he departed for the crusade. He wrote home often, about everything he saw, his battles, the people he helped. From his letters, I learned that he had joined the Eagle Watch in Kenabras. But soon his letters became infrequent, and then they stopped altogether. We feared news of his death, but silence was our only answer. Not a word from him, or from his command, or his brothers in arms. Nothing. Hmm. In the end, I couldn't wait any longer and I came here myself. To find Trevor, if he's still alive. Or his grave, if he should have perished. But, my brother seems to have vanished. I tried asking the other paladins, but they refused to talk to me, and it's very much like they are trying to avoid the need to lie. I sent official requests to their order's command, still I wait in vain for an answer. I joined the local church of Shlin, hoping to find out the truth one day. But the city was attacked by demons. When your brother was preparing to become a paladin of Sh Sh Shailen, uh, did he learn some kind of art as well, art too? Yes. Sozil smiles warmly. He's always been a good wood carver. Toys, whistles, window frames. Our house was the most beautiful in the area, all dressed in his wooden filigree, from the railing on the stairs to the wonder bird on the roof. You must love your brother very much to follow him here. You have no idea how much. I would follow him to the end of the world, into the abyss itself, if need be. Trevor is an amazing man. I know he's alive, he's too stubborn to die. I hope one day he joins us, and then we will surely triumph. How did you end up in the court of Queen Gulfrey? The cleric looks down. When the city was attacked by demons, there was a hospital in our church. Every one of us was prepared to fight to the last, to cover the evacuation. But our mother superior wouldn't let me join the fight. She sent me for help. And, everyone who stayed was killed. Why did she choose me? Maybe it was because I was new the youngest and least experienced of the clerics, and I wouldn't be much help in battle. Or maybe, maybe she was giving me a chance to survive while the rest of them bravely died. Shlin be my witness, I did not ask for this. I would be honored to lay my own head next to theirs. I ran to the closest Mendevian garrison. I don't know by what miracle I got there. There were demons all around, and everything was on fire. I remember my horse was killed right under me while I fought off some shrieking monsters. But when I came to, I awoke among friends. My first thought was that it must be a dream. In my delirium, Queen Galfrey herself was dressing my wounds. But it was true, it was the Queen herself, tending to a lowly warrior. That's how I ended up in her army. I marched with them back to Kenabras. To the ruins. Okay. The hell? How do you manage to always look like you're on the way to a tea party, not battle? Does he? Mm. 
Alright. So Zil looks down, for a few moments searching in silence for the right words. At mm. last he softly replies, when I first got here. To the world wound. You know, the word terror doesn't convey half of what I felt. The land itself here is maimed and mutilated, desecrated. But more frightening still is what the war does to people. To their bodies and souls. Hmm. For every knight in shining armor, there are a hundred warriors whose souls are maimed with fear, suffering, and cruelty. Many have forgotten why they are here, and now know only war. When there's a break in the fighting, they drink themselves into oblivion and wallow in the mud. They're rotting alive and don't even seek help. They gave up on themselves a long time ago. So Zil looks you in the face, and you see pain in his eyes. Don't misunderstand me, I don't condemn them. Quite the opposite, I want to help. And to do so, I must look after myself first. Not only to treat and support them, but to remind them that there's something else besides war. There's a normal world out there. A place where blood doesn't stain the ground, and people don't sleep in trenches and... A place where, as you said, they even occasionally have tea parties. The cleric smiles, but his eyes seem sad. You do so much to help others. I want you to know, whenever you yourself need support, you can always count on me. Thanks for caring. I'm glad I now have a friend like you. I used to have no one to rely on besides my goddess. A shadow crosses Sozil's face momentarily, but it's immediately replaced with an inspiring smile. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I promise I won't neglect myself. To serve others, I must have strength. Uh -huh. What is a servant of the Goddess of Beauty doing in a war zone? I am doing what the Goddess destined me for, to keep our fighters safe. I am confident in our victory. The Gods of Good are on our side, so we cannot fail. But victory is not enough. I do whatever I can to help those who are holding off the forces of the Abyss, so they may live long enough to see victory, without losing themselves along the way. Every one of our soldiers deserves a home where people love them and are waiting for their return. When our soldiers are finally able to go home, on that day, I may earn the right to lay down my weapons forever. I'm not saying number six. That sounds a bit, yeah, too much. Uh, I don't want a romantic path with him, no. <laughs> um, thank you for telling me about yourself. So Zil nods to you um, with a smile. Tell me about your brother. Trevor. He's always been my hero, ever since we were children. I was a coward, always telling petty lies, always running away from danger. Trevor always ran toward it. He had this saying, an army stands until peace comes, a lie stands until the truth comes out. He never lied, never let injustice pass. Never. The cleric's voice trembles and breaks, and he shakes his head. He was eight when he said he was going to be a paladin. And he always went toward that goal day after day, never looking back. I remember the day he went off to fight. I thought, this is it. The war will finally end. Trevor will defeat all the demons and close the world wound. But, so Zil gestures helplessly. Thank you for talking to me. My pleasure. Okay. Good afternoon. My pleasure.
There you are. Good days and clear skies. What do you say? Cena smiles. See you. I can handle it. Can't make the demons wait. Beautiful. Alright, this is the queen. Let's see queen. what we can do. Look who it is. Hi. All right. You watch yourself now. Queen Galfrey nods to you cordially. Her armor is plain and unadorned. As promised, I entered the ranks incognito, along with a few bodyguards. I have introduced myself as Keetrani, an old friend of yours. I am a knight of a minor order, the Green Crows. We shall see how long it takes Anivia to sniff me out. Mm. The Queen chuckles. Why did you decide to join the crusade after all? Because I have a curious mind, and I am quite unable to sit and do nothing for long. The queen smiles, but then grows serious. You ask a difficult question. I must remain as safe as possible. My death or abduction would sow chaos among our forces. However, I am not only a queen. I am also a paladin of Iomade. It is not in my nature to sit in a palace with my sword sheathed. As you should. In a manner of speaking, your request was simply a convenient excuse for me to be where I belong, crusading against the demon hordes. Besides, I am curious to see my new knight commander in action. Yeah? I have a question for you as well. Why did you wish me to join you on the crusade? Hmm, I'm not like any of these things so much. <clears throat> Alright, we'll go with the romance side of it. I wanted to get to know you better, surely you know how intriguing you are. 
Enough, Commander. The Queen scoffs with a smile. Everything that could possibly be known about me has been written in the Chronicles and notarized. Uh, may I ask you a personal question? I've learned so much about Queen Godfrey from the Chronicles and the Legends, but what about the other Queen Godfrey, the one that historians and bards cannot see? The Queen smiles faintly. That Galfrey is an old woman, weighed down by a great burden. But she has not lost her passion, and she will make the feathers fly when the time comes. Uh, what? <laughs> okay. We'll go to the romance thing again. Um, I look forward to working closely with you, and who knows, maybe feathers won't be the only thing flying. Galfrey arches her eyebrow. It seems my knight commander is not above resorting to clumsy innuendo. Hmm. I don't know about this. Do you really think that you are the first person to attempt to charm me with such words? You are not. If you want to impress me, you'll need to do better than that. Yeah, um, I think I should be getting into her about how she treats half these people at times. Um, how the society, I don't know. I don't know really how many options this game goes with that type of stuff. Um, hmm. Just mostly good or evil choices. Or neutral. Hmm. Obviously, flirtation here. Okay, let's ask her about how long, how does it feel living so long beyond all natural limits? You are over a hundred years old, my queen, aren't you? Uh, it's written places, I guess, which is, you really be asking her about her age? Um, why not? Still, you sound like a prosecutor at a trial. Hmm. Why allow yourself what others cannot have, against all natural law? That is what I hear in your question. The Queen frowns. But rulers benefit from criticism, do they not? That's what I was uh, thinking I should be doing, but okay. I should be criticizing, okay. Um, maybe. I shall answer thus, the decision to prolong my life was not mine. It was the decision of the Church of Iomede. The Sun Orchid Elixirs have been paid for by the Church. The priests determined that I was needed in these dark times, both as a ruler and a chosen paladin of Iomede. I accepted their decision, and the great responsibility it entails. Hmm. Why did you entrust me with Delarin? The Queen smiles. I saw such a wonderful opportunity to teach the Count a lesson and just couldn't resist. I think he wanted to stay. <laughs> he just didn't know how to say it. Honestly, I expected you to dismiss him forthwith. The Count would have been forced to return to court a laughing stock. It would have been a truly sobering experience. There is nothing more disgraceful for a Mendivian nobleman than to be discharged like that. He doesn't seem to care what the other nobles think of him. Or at least says that. Um, at times. Not all the time, but yeah. Um, De Arana the and De, think. the Queen shakes her head. He was such a lovely child. His mother, Lady Selina, was one of the most gracious people I have ever met. 
She was amiable yet decorous, and truly kind. Bonds of kinship among the nobility are on the whole highly practical and only useful for forming alliances, but Countess Arande managed to become a true member of my family. I suppose that is why I spent so much time believing her son to be a better person than he actually was. Hmm. I don't think she knows him well enough. Uh, why does it take the time to? His company is a heavy burden. Still, I must admit that I am quite pleased that you decided to keep him on as a companion. There is a small chance that once he has had a true taste of the crusade life, the Count will finally cease to mock the crusaders as cynically as he is wont to do. Hmm. You've given an army and the title. You've given an army and the title of knight commander to a stranger. Why? Because for a hundred years I have protected my lands, trying to drive the demon horde back into the abyss. I have tried every right and rational method. The queen affords herself a brief, grim smirk. My armies have been led by the greatest generals, even Iomade's angels. My goddess's herald created the ward stones for us. We have tasted victory more than once. But we have failed to close the world wound. As for you, do not call yourself a stranger. You are the savior of Kenabras. Hundreds of its people saw the power that descended upon you and turned the demons to dust. It's the sign they've awaited for decades. A sign for all loyal hearts and followers of Iomade. The time has come. Hope has been rekindled in the hearts of my subjects, thanks to you. Hope is a priceless resource, I had no choice but to give it wings. I don't think you're gonna keep that. Thought. Um, eventually, um, she's gonna probably regret this, uh, but anyway, uh, what's the other options here, um, you call it the sign you've been waiting for, but I take it you are reserving judgment. Your question seems to catch the queen off balance. A strange spark flashes in her eyes. When Aroden perished, and Iomade took over his legacy, I was among the first to serve the new goddess. I helped restore her church from the ashes left by the chaos after Aroden's death. Since then, I have served the inheritor loyally and truthfully. I like to believe that I have earned the blessing of my goddess. The queen's voice is surprisingly ardent. Can we actually dethrone her? After I learned of what happened in Kenabras, when I met you at the Defender's Heart, I had so many questions. Is it true that what happened was Iome Day's work? Why did she give this power to someone unknown, rather than one of her most loyal followers? Could it be that my faith has grown weak, and I don't recognize the deeds of my goddess even when they are happening right in front of me? Is the goddess somehow testing me? Those doubts were like poison. But I refused to let them poison me, the queen finishes strongly. I gave you an army, declared you knight commander, and accepted you as I would anyone chosen by the goddess. Okay, I must go. Don't forget, here I am Keetrani the knight. Mm. Yes. You do you. Um... Something doesn't feel right. I need to stay alert. Okay. It feels good to be on my crusade again. I was sick of the dusty old plate. Okay. Is there something to detect out here? 
Here we go. I can handle it. I don't have detective visibility, do I? How can I help? I'll be glad to. If you have any questions, come back. Can't make the demons wait. Where are she? Back at her tent, I think. For Nivea. Beautiful. Look who it is. No, Hi. I can't talk about All right. the plane. You watch yourself okay. now. How about Irabeth? I'm listening, Commander. Tirabeth says goodbye with a short bow. Bow. Ah. Uh, oops, I did the screen. Did it again. Let's see what we can do. Alright, uh, there's nothing left again. Uh, we did. Uh, we'll bring him, but anyway. How far away from leveling? About halfway. Oh. Whoops. Magical anomalies are common in the world of Gularian. So common that the use of the word anomaly itself is questionable. A regular city dweller will encounter a chaotic manifestation of supernatural power at least once in their lifetime. One might naturally assume that the strange sky, the ghostly fire from rifts in the ground, the rain of eyeballs, all that the world wound is known for, should find some purchase in the mortal mind. but even the most worldly of travelers feel uneasy at its borders. Why? Perhaps instinctively they understand that this place is not merely a magical wasteland, but a wound, an ulcer, through which the world itself bleeds into the abyss. World bleeds in... the abyss bleeds into the world? Sounds more like the abyss is bleeding into the world the other way around. The demons come out of it, not go into it. I don't know. The commander yeah. and his army walk up the high bank of the West Selin River, where it draws near the border of the world wound. The soldiers' feet halt unbidden. On the other bank rises a series of cliffs, too regular in shape to have been formed by wind or water. The sky hangs over their sharp edges and sickening bends, the shade of mercury on the horizon, rising to dirty rust. As it arches above the soldiers' heads, it regains its familiar azure hue. Soldiers whisper and grumble, the commander feels, eye, that feels eyes. The soldiers whisper and grumble. The commander feels eyes upon his back. Somewhere among them, Wearing simple armor and unrecognized by anyone, the ruler of Mendev is standing and watching the new commander closely. The commander gives a signal to wait, and climbs to the highest point along the bank. There he decides to. Uh, 
Um, we'll get that one, I should. I think my athletics are fine enough for that. Oh, I could get it. Just very uh, we'll go with this one. Boost morale. Interest soldiers boost their morale. Yep, succeeded. Succeeded at a diplomacy check. Establishing rapport with his troops is yet another battle that the leader must face. Through the subtle alchemy of words, one can win trust and raise morale, or lose face and authority. Addressing the army on the border of the world wound, the commander seeks to establish himself as a military leader on this new battleground. And his efforts prove fruitful. The soldiers listen dutifully, smiles appearing on their faces. Someone in the ranks jokes that the demons are growing tired of waiting for them. The army keeps moving. Lines of soldiers step warily beneath the shroud of low black clouds. It's like the world wound has reached out a finger into the lands of Mendev. The gesture seems eerily harmless, but then the clouds come to life, shooting out howling tornadoes, one after another. The tornadoes come from all sides, from ahead, behind, and right above the soldiers' heads. The power of the elements on one side of the scales, the soldiers' faith and inspiration on the other. It's plain to see which is greater. The determined army runs the gauntlet of tornadoes. The struggle lasts over half an hour, but the army's only losses are a few bags of supplies and a dozen hats whipped off into the sky. After stopping to catch their breath, the soldiers continue on. Their first encounter with the world wound has ended in their favor. Change of morale plus 10. Current morale 12. Said. Okay, it just gives me 20. We'll get down to minus 100. Uh, affects recruitment growth, resources income, and the morale of the Crusader army. Each point. Of morale above zero increases the growth of trainable units and resources income by 1%. So it's 20% at the most. Um, each point of morale below zero reduces the growth of trainable units and resources income by 1%. Okay, so that Does that mean I lose money? Can I lose troops I have? Can't recruit. Mm, each victory over demon army adds four days to the timer. The banner of victory stays green. The banner of March of Dresden, each victory over a demon army on the road to Dresden adds 10 days to the timer. The banner of the... No, it stays green. Um, I don't completely understand that. Uh, I earn $285 finance points a day. So, no, 202. 224 This is fine on that thing for those. That uh, ring or something. The dude's fiance. Uh, 
Together, we stand. Yeah, I'm tough again. Here we go. Uh, okay. Exhausted. Should have probably rested in camp. Well, hello there. We're finally here. Ilan and Curl must be around here somewhere, and Jana too, if they gave her permission to leave. Ah, there they are. Greetings, Sila, and greetings to you, Knight Commander. Sir Ilan puts his hands behind his back and bows slightly. Then he casts an inquisitive glance at you. He seems less friendly than he was the day you met at the Defender's Heart. Hmm. Jana puts her hands on her hips. She looks even more dashing than usual. Ilan is feeling a little shy. He thought he asked for help from a couple nobodies like us, but now you've turned into the saviors of Kenabras, Knights of the Fifth Crusade, marked by Iome Day's blessing. And you still came to help him dig through a pile of junk, ha ha. Sila frowns a little. Let's not talk about it. I assure you, I'm the same Sila, your friend from the League of the Cart. And we came here to help you look for Ilan's ring. By the way, where's Curl? He didn't come with us. He said an old wound was acting up. All right, my friends. Since we're here, let's finish this mission quickly. I really don't feel comfortable bothering the Knight Commander with my personal problems. Hmm. What does the ring look like? Where should we... Look for it. The last time I saw the ring it was with my things in my traveling chest. Now the camp's in total disarray. I don't know how we'll ever find it. The ring is made of a shiny silver metal, with a deep blue-green jewel. You can't miss it. Master Derek is not just a jeweler, he's an artist. There's no mistaking one of his creations. A trinket worth several months' pay, Ilan. The rules on the surface are insane. You should give your girls fried rats like we do. You'd save yourself a lot of trouble. So the way to a mongrel's heart is through a stomach. Uh, is there anything wrong with... Ellen, am I making you feel nervous? The young knight is obviously embarrassed. I apologize. Jana is right. Much has changed since we met in Kenabras. Some things for the better, some not at all. He stops short, apparently unwilling to elaborate. Okay. All right, off we go. Jana and I will look around the northern side. We'll see you when we find something. Or when we give up trying. Hey. I can handle it. I found... Uh... Something? Cut open in, from inside, the knights apparently left in a hurry. Out for a 
Bard. The tent is different from the rest. There is a strong burnt smell around it and a rustling sound coming from within. Uh, save. Alright, quick. This one. Hmm. Okay. The ground is trampled and there are signs of battle everywhere. The hound parts were clearly attacked by demons here. Um Talk to these people. I'm still uneasy about dragging you into this. Was, what an adventure, right? I wish doing the duty was always like that. Well, this didn't go well. I need to recover my. Remove the that, goddess think, protects us. If this Exhausted today. Yeah. Okay. Got this one. I found something. Okay, it's better than what I have, slightly. A failure is just a step to us. I rolled a four, okay. Um. A success worthy of praise. Flag to him of the color. Um. Hound Hearts, a small but notable order of the Crusaders. Beautiful! Uh, stuff. I the storyteller crow tell me about. Um. 
one looks suspicious. A small quasit demon emerges from the chest. It looks at you angrily, screwing up its ugly little face. It is holding a shiny object in its paws, a sparkling silver ring with a large blue-green jewel. It's mine. Mine. Alright. Ilan, look. Look at that creepy thing. What's it holding? I've seen one of those before. These small demons like to tease and bully, but it'll bolt if it senses any real threat. Let's surround it and attack all together, before it can figure out what's happening. Mine. The crazy throws its paws in the air and splashes you with beams of color. Should we rest now? Nah. You hear insolent giggling. The demon is jumping up and down, throwing the ring into the air and catching it. Mine. Mine. Ilan. Jana. Sila glances at her friends, then turns to you. They're all right, they'll come round soon. Quickly, Lunacow, let's catch the little rascal before it runs off with the ring. Okay. We will You're win this fastest. war. Lead on! The light! Take you! The inheritor! Guide my blade! It is no trouble. Keep dismantling me. What's going on? Hey. Cool. Give me that ring. Um. Before Lan manages to get to the Quasit, the halfling curl appears right next to it quite out of nowhere. He snatches the ring from the demon's paws. You mustn't get it. Hmm. What's he up to? Pearl. What are you? Thrusting herself between Ilan and Curl, Sela barely manages to absorb the blow aimed at the halfling. Ilan, stop. Have okay, you gone mad? Okay, I guess it's screwed up because she's on a horse. Um, see the thrust itself. Okay, absorb the blow. Have you gone mad? He's using a summon spell. Why did you stop? Summon spell. Let's prove their logic is lacking. Oh. Lovely parade. So... What? She's not so she was okay. She said back in camp she was uh, wanted to get into the fray of things. Um Sight. I got this. This condition is irrational. Dedicate my body to science. Science. 
Ilan, mm. what were you doing? You nearly cut down Curl. Without a second thought, without a trial, without even knowing if he was responsible for all of this. He might be a victim himself. True. What am I doing? He lured us into a trap. Curl was the only one who knew where we were going. He knew we thought there wouldn't be anyone at the camp besides some small harmless demons, so he set a trap. I wouldn't be surprised if his demon masters had him targeting the commander from the start. Talk about believing in the redemption of scoundrels. Ilan scoffs. Mm. Oh. These things need charging. Yeah. Another set on. We barely know anything about what happened. Curl is a good lad. He's not a spy or a murderer. Maybe they threatened him, tricked him, or even bewitched him with demon magic. And now we'll never know because you let him escape. Better to let a thief escape than cut down an innocent. Uh, we'll go with choice one. Ellen thinks Sela was defending someone she thought was her, your, her friend and she stopped you from doing something you might regret. I don't need a shepherd to light my path and save me from regrets. Can you say the same, Sela? Or you, Commander? Um, kind of. You clearly have something to say. Go ahead then. Spit it out. Sela, I didn't want to say this, but I think of you as my friend so I'm going to warn you. After what happened at the Grey Garrison, you're in serious danger. And maybe not just you. You might like to ignore military hierarchy and the rules of knightly orders but there's wisdom in them that has stood the test of time. A soldier rises from a private to an officer, a knight begins as a squire. Even Iomade's paladins gain their abilities gradually. But not with you and the commander. You were granted incredible powers, far surpassing seasoned paladins with experience and skill far beyond your years. You received this gift at just the right moment, and saved a lot of lives across Mendev. That's a great deed that will be remembered for ages to come. But what happened next was wrong. They began to worship you. The queen gave you such vast power. All while you sidestepped everything, training, experience, hardship. This is not the first time Her Majesty has behaved rashly, and how much good has this brought Mendev? I'm frightened by what I see. Especially by the way that you, Sela, trust people so easily and leap into adventures without looking. One day you'll lower your sword when you should have driven the blade home. Just like thousands of bright-eyed youngsters will after you. Ilan pauses, as if reluctant to continue, then looks you in the eye. I wanted to tell you the same thing, 
Commander. He's got a point, but he's not looking at it from a political point of view either. Because uh, there's a few other points that could be made there. Um, hmm. The Queen was very political with how she did things in a diplomatic, political, pol political, yeah. Hmm. Okay. All right, you're right to an extent, Elon, but I didn't choose my lot. I don't know exactly what that means, because what companions, position, what? Um, I'm just trying to fulfill my duty as best I can. My lot. Mm, it's a lawful choice. I'm gonna go with it. The knight lowers his head. I apologize for my harsh words. I said it to Sela, and I'll say it again. This wasn't a reproach, but a warning. The power you've been given, it may be your undoing, and the undoing of all the Crusaders along with you. Don't be afraid of what's new and unknown. We just need to bear in mind our responsibilities. Whatever was given to us, we can use it for good. In any case, forgive me for wasting your time, and subjecting you to danger here. Now at least we know that Curl is a traitor, and Janna is a coward ready to abandon her friends when the going gets rough. I hope we'll all learn a lesson from these mistakes. As for that blasted ring, to hell with it. Kyana won't love me solely for the gifts I bring her. Ilan makes no attempt to conceal his disappointment. Nodding goodbye, he lowers his head and walks away. All is not lost, I reckon. Find out more. Sela watches as he leaves. Her expressive eyes are filled with sadness. Everything's become very complicated all of a sudden. Please, Lunacal, let's go back. And I'd like to talk to you about it, later. I have a lot to think about. Yeah, I think there's a lot more going on. That girl that ran off, she have a thing for that guy or something. Um, and that girl knows something about it, but I don't know why she each same summon demons. Um, Let's see what we can do. Get back to the town, I guess. Rest. Um. Yep. They're not there anymore. 
other people. Hmm. Uh. Sila looks sad and pensive. It's good to see you. Get this, Jana, the one who ran away when we were attacked by demons, never went back to her unit. She was seen running toward Numeria. Looks like she deserted. Hmm. Anyway, that's not what I wanted to talk about. Or not the only thing. Since our raid on the Hound Hearts camp, I've had this sinking feeling that I made a mistake. Dragging you into this, I mean. I should have known that a raid along the edge of the world wound wouldn't be so easy. But mostly, I was wrong about a lot of people. About Janna, who lost her nerve and abandoned her friends. About Curl, I knew he was a thief, but I really thought he'd turned over a new leaf and deserved a little compassion and trust. And Ilan. I thought we were kindred spirits, friends through thick and thin. But it looks like I was wrong about him too. Sila looks at you closely, waiting for your answer. Don't lose your trust in people, Sila. So what if you made a few mistakes? There's no reason to give up on your ideals. Somebody has to show people that there's a better path. Sila's expression brightens. Thank you, my friend. I needed that support. She sighs. Thanks for listening to my grumbling, and for helping me get to the bottom of this. I'm not going to leave things as they stand. If I get the chance, I'll track down Janna and see if I can talk some sense into her. And find out why Curl did what he did. I can't stop thinking about what Ilan told me in the end. I really have become more powerful than paladins who are far more experienced and selfless than me. There's something not right about it. A servant of Iomade should gain their powers through dedicated personal effort. It's the only way to make sure they'll use the power for good. Our journey so far, it's all wrong. And it means I need to be three times as hard on myself now. Four hundred experience, not too bad. Here we go. I can handle it. The bearded. Why is there no backpack? Let me get rid of my stuff as well. Stuff weighs so much. Let's sell some of this stuff as well. Oops. I'm never going to use them. Oh. I don't know, maybe I would have gotten someone who's undead in my party. Uh, shit. There's another option here. The bearded quartermaster gives you a friendly nod. What can how, I do for you? How are things in the camp? I owe oh, may day be praised. Everything's fine. 
We are well supplied, nobody's going hungry, and the sick. Well, you can't run a military campaign without somebody getting sick, but they aren't taking up any more beds than usual. Except. The quartermaster looks at the mound of equipment bearing the signs of recent tinkering. We're having a little problem with the soldier's gear. The army has a standard that dictates who gets what. Except this standard is only good for fighting around Kenabras. Needless to say, the conditions inside the world wound are completely different. The scouts have been complaining. The local vegetation is like razor blades, they say, and it's slashing the soles of their boots to ribbons. Their cloaks might protect them from the cold, but they're useless against acid snow or caustic mist. The scouts are missing plenty of vital gear, a coil of rope is a simple thing, but there's not even enough to go around, can you imagine? How are they supposed to scale mountains with no rope? So I've been thinking, what if we issue them different equipment? The scouts, at least. Alright, um, I'm afraid boots and rope won't be enough. Put the scouts on horses and provide everything they need. And try that. Home. Oh. Now that you mention it, the horses are faster and can carry plenty. I'll see to it, Commander. I'll immediately write to Ken Arbras and ask for experienced mounted scouts. We're oh. getting ourselves a cavalry. If two of your armies stand next to each other on the global map, you can transfer units between the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You already know that. Ah. Can't make the demons wait. I'm listening, Knight. Waldif give. Waldif shrugs. Whatever, your. Greetings. I won't keep you. The dawning smile on Camellia's face freezes and quickly dies away. This girl again. It is good to see you. What can I do for you? Would you like to renew your forces with excellent fighters? Who was the elf that was talking to you? She didn't introduce herself, but she was greatly interested in the volunteers that had joined the army. She thought I might know the elf she was looking for from my mercenary contacts. But I couldn't tell you any more than that, she never shared his name. Good luck. Watch your back. Only trust your closest friends. The enemy is cunning and treacherous. Yeah. Beautiful. Ember is bobbing her head and humming a tune. So go. The elf watches you with a radiant smile as you leave. How can- 
If you have any questions, come back. Something's gonna happen with this elf in here, I reckon. At some point. The elf's pale, Butte. Mm. Good fortune to you. What are you doing here? Good afternoon, Commander. Mm -hmm. My pleasure. That away, that away. Alright, let's take so many of these things of the way to you. Uh, Bigger bags a bit easier. What are these way? Hmm. Isn't the potions to the fair bit? I can probably write some of those spells to my mage. Yeah, I'll do that. I won't put them away yet. I can't do that as a sorcerer, can I? No. Just mages that write scrolls. Alright, let's rest.
It pains me to think that any living creature could be so dull and predictable. Tell me, Soziel, do you have even the smallest secret? Something unusual that you keep private from the world? The only thing I hide from the world is my fear, and my desire to throw up my hand and say, Someone else can do this. I am not ashamed to admit it. Now it's your turn. All right. Let's see what we can do. Nice. Say the morale changed to two. Changed by two. Let me know when I put down. save i think i'm gonna call it there for an episode <clears throat> i want to get some brekkie